intro. We just did it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Welcome to getting fucked up on the internet again with Denver and Derek. <laughs> yep. This is Black and Out with Denver and Derek, uh, a podcast about music appreciation. We yep. give each other albums and we do a little bit of a review, but it's not like a fucking magazine review, any kind of shit like that. This is just a couple of fanatic uh, music fans. Yes. And we're showing each other shit. We're showing each other shit. You probably won't know unless unless you listen to this, then you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, you wouldn't listen to this any other way. The best thing about being like a crazy fucking music obsessed person. Oh no, I'm getting my stickers wet. Is uh, well, dude, we forgot to do that. Yeah. The uh, best thing about being an obsessed music person is that you can't, you don't have time to check out all the shit. And every person you meet that's a big fucking music nerd loves completely different bands than you. Yeah. But they they go together. Yep. And that's what we're doing is we're showing each other. We have a similar music taste, so we show yeah. each other. And we show each other shit outside the box, too. Yeah. Like one week, he shows me something heavy. I show him something not heavy. Right. And this week, I'm showing him something heavy. He showed me something not heavy. And that's where we are. Yeah. And uh, we, we had a little bit of a break because just fucking holidays. And, and a heat wave. Heat waves. Terrible heat wave. <laughs> Terrible heat wave. It, it made uh, 85 degrees today feel fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you know it got way too hot around here lately is it was 85 and I was like, it feels good today. Dude, ever since like Monday, I'm like, it feels fucking awesome. Like, yeah, oh it's, man. It's that time of year. It's awesome all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is what spring is supposed to be, yeah. I think. But yeah. like, yeah, if somebody like not from here would come here and like, Fucking gross. Yeah. <laughs> like, he'll be like, this Yeah. They come here, everybody's outside, like, no, we can all do shit. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's muggy and shitty the past couple weeks. Yeah. We've Probably had, like three elderly people died because of no air conditioning. Shit, yeah. And yeah, we've had a lot of people go down for heat strokes at work. Yeah. So I don't want to fucking hear about you, Arizona. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, man. Personal <laughs> shit. Personal stuff. Yeah. Well, Denver made the playlist that you're hearing in the background this week. You want to give us a little insight uh, on that? We got some uh, nun slaughter. Right out of the gate. And right. And uh, what is it? Uh, we have some uh, Aragus. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I don't know how to say that neither. Ar- yeah, Aragus or I, I something? I think it's... I say Aragus. Aragus? I don't know. I don't know. It just sounds like it's pretty important. I don't know. What is it? A-E-G-R-U-S. Yeah, Aragus. Aragus. Agris. 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 Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Made it sound stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, oh, some Timbal Avoid. Fucking ass. And I'm uh, gonna. We always uh, have a record at the end, and it's a uh, friendless. Friendless. Um. Yeah, their record. So, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> really good. Right on. Uh, something that you brought up on one of the older episodes is that you can't. You listen to those? Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't, but I, these are old notes. You take, you take long shits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not really. But you brought this up on an old episode, and I, I wanted to make note of it because it happens to me all the time, too. But, like, let's let's go ahead and use the band that we were talking about. Is yeah. You were like, I want to check out the new Dark Throne album, but I haven't really checked out Dark Throne, so I can't do that. Yeah. And uh, that's a true fact. You can't check out yeah. an old band's new album first. Like, yeah. it just... You don't know what you're getting into. Some a band with that stature and yeah. history, right? You know, yeah. You can't really just jump into their newest yeah. album like that because you don't know what you're supposed to appreciate about it. Yeah, you know. And I've done that a few times. It always pisses me off when people do it, but I've done it a few times uh, myself. Yeah. There's, there's bands that are like I first liked. Um, 
you know, hearing their newer stuff. Yeah. But then I go back and check their fucking catalog out, you know, if they're an older band like that. Cause then I end up, you appreciate it more, you understand it more, right. and, uh, yeah, you're a lot cooler at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a lot of times for me, I do the exact same thing if it is a newer band that yeah. I'm checking out. Kind of uh, a nerdy thing to do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You usually end up liking the older shit more most of the time, just because... Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way the bands work. Totally. To to I just hate whenever I see people jump on a bandwagon of, like... Like, people are like, this new album's great, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, motherfucker, I didn't hear you talk about the last three albums. I, Certain bands, you can do that. Yeah. But when it comes to shit like black metal and stuff, no. You gotta know that old back shit. Backtrack, yeah. Yeah, you gotta know the back yeah. catalog. Yeah. Uh, I actually did do this, though, with one of my recent, like, probably... I'd say obsessions more than favorite bands, mm-hmm. but uh, the band Baptism. I heard The Devil's Fire first, yeah. and I was like, "This band sucks." Like I didn't care about it, and then I went back and heard their older albums. I'm like, "This is the exact kind of black metal that I like," and uh, so it's not even good a good idea to do that to go into the overproduced version of the band. You know, like I'm not gonna go and listen to Venom's new album if I haven't heard old Venom and shit like that because you don't know you're not really hearing Venom yeah you know not the Venom that everybody else is talking yeah. about so and for fuck's sake you might be hearing like a new band uh that's been around for 30 years and there's not even it's not even the original band anymore yeah it's not even the same member you know yeah. they probably went through like or they probably went through like four singers or you know yeah you're like I'm gonna check out the new Cradle of Filth you're like you're start here. to finish man that's, you're listening to a completely it. different band than what Cradle yeah. of Filth was I almost said that yeah. well Cradle that's a good Filth. band to bring up cause there's like two yeah. members maybe yeah if Paul is still no Paul's I don't not think Paul's any. not in the band anymore Oh, it's just Danny. Danny it's just Danny. Yeah. I forgot the Paul. There's like two brothers yeah. that play guitar now or something. Yeah. And they're blonde. I think if you're in black metal and you're blonde, that's a sure sign of a Nazi right there. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. If you want to just like pick out Nazi black metal dudes, just go with the blonde guy. Yeah. Go in a dark alley and you'll find a guy and he says, You like Cradle of Filth? <laughs> you remember Nicholas? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if, if a black metal band dude is... These fucking things suck. Yeah, I hate those things. Yeah. If a black metal band guy is too proud of his blonde hair to dye it black, you might be looking at a Nazi band there. Yep. Uh, I mean... I know what you're doing. Yeah. I know what you're doing. No, you don't. I anyway, think I do. No, you don't. Anyway. You're doing black metal Jeff Foxworthy jokes. Oh, oh! Are you? <laughs> that kind of works Is out. Is that what it? you're doing? You might be a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know. Yeah. You might be, what is it, yeah. NSBM. Yeah. If you wake up yeah. and you can't tell if it's light or day, <laughs> you might be black metal. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I didn't mean to do that, and now it sucks. I thought you was doing I would that have, on purpose, man. If I was doing that on purpose, I'd have 40 more fucking minutes of material. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'd have your double disc CD <laughs> listening to that shit. An evening wit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Black with- collar comedy. Oh, <laughs> dude, I'm down with that. Yeah, you should do that. I might. Oh, do it. Ideas are being born on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, which album do you want to cover first? Let's, uh, I'll fucking go ahead and start it. Okay. Derek gave me Manchester Orchestra. <laughs> uh, mean Everything to Nothing. I think it came out in 2009. Was it? I don't know. know. But uh, they have plenty of albums after that. Yeah. And they're pretty pretty well known. Yeah. And uh, I just looked them up today and they got a show somewhere sold out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But uh, very good uh, indie alternative rock band. Yeah, that's a good way. Really good. Oh, yeah, I mean, shit. If you're into shit like, I don't know, like, brand new, uh, what's that? I don't 
don't like these guys, but Motion City Soundtrack. That's kind of a thing you can uh, say about this band, is I don't like the bands that they are associated with, but I love this yeah, band. Yeah, they can be associated with it. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, well, it doesn't remind me of the category. Right. But, uh, they fit in the category. Very, but they're different. I, uh, I was iffy at first. I had to listen to it a few times. And they have that song, I Got Friends and all of them. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, at first I thought it was a cover song. Right. And because I was like, I've fucking heard that so many times before. Right. And then it reminded me, like, on PS2, I have the MLB The Show game. And on a certain part when it loads, it plays that song. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And I was like, oh, shit, that's where it's from. It sounds like it could be a cover song. Well, yeah, there's that... Uh, yeah, there's that country song I got friends in low places for. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. kind of like a, totally. an indie rock version of that. Yeah. So. Probably where they probably... That's probably what they meant to do. Yeah, know? something like that. And, uh... I don't know, it was really a, so I thought like most of the first couple tracks I was like, ah, it's gonna be this. It's alright. Mm-hmm. Not my thing. And then it starts getting fucking deep. It starts getting it slow. It starts getting yeah. really uh Yeah, it starts getting really deep and slow and really good. Great lyrics. I'm a boy. <laughs> and uh Mike Tuff! Basically, what I want to say is the song, uh, I Can Feel a Hot One. Yeah, that's the one. You told me. We, we yeah. tried to record this episode a couple weeks yeah. ago, but we got busy. And it, it's fucking real, man. Yeah. It's, it's a great song if you like any kind of music like that. And, you know, you basically talk about memories of fucking chick hanging herself with curtains. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, dude, it's basically all you need to know. It's really good. It is. And if you want to get in that kind of mood, listen to that shit, which I did. I was uh, I listened to it twice. Well, I listened to that song like four times in yeah. one night. That's a bad album. Fucking terrible. Yeah, yeah. that's a bad but, uh, I loved it. Right. But uh, <laughs> I haven't been in that mood to listen to that kind of shit since. There, but there it's, it's it's a great thing, but. Uh, be in that kind of mood. Yeah, you have it's, to be in the mood. It's really good, though, for what they're doing. Spot on, really great. They, more people should know about them. Yeah. Yeah, I really dig it, though. Uh, really they're, it. they're definitely, like you were saying, there are songs yes. on this album that yeah. I can't listen to. I, like, I, I heard them the yeah. first few times I listened to the album, but now I, like, I'm not going to listen yeah. to that one. If you like bands like most and shitty soundtracks, then you'll love this because they're actually good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good way to. They're actually good. So <laughs> I, I really to... like it. Yeah. Uh, this album is at. It's... I got a tall can for them. Yeah, there you yeah. go. This album is really it's a total fucking banger. If by banger you mean like cry yourself dehydrated and punch a hole in the wall yeah. kind of shit. Like it's it's a super deep fucking sad album. Yeah. It does have a really perfect flow, though, I think. Like, it starts off kind of peppy. Mm-hmm. And uh, did you happen to, like, listen to it on YouTube? I just, uh, Spotify. Spotify. If you do it on YouTube, every single song has a music video. Oh, really? Yeah, and, it, and most know. of them are really good. But it's a, it starts out kind of cheery, and then it gets a little sad. It slows down a little bit, but in a really good way. Like, it's a, it's a deep, like, really grabs you kind of way. It gets pretty emotional, but it has, like, pick-up parts where it gets kind of more upbeat yeah. again. It's just to keep you, like, from not being super bummed out. Yeah. And, uh... uh mind if I say? Go ahead. Um, bullshit. After song four, turn it off, because you'll kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> That's pretty true. Yeah, that's a little true. No, really, though. Like, seriously, it is. Whenever it's- I first heard this album, I thought, like, I really like this. But if it, and I'm talking like within the first. It's like drawing you in. Yeah. That's what the first song is. They're drawing you in. Yeah, to like, yeah. you're coming with me, dude. This one's sadder. This yeah. one's sadder. This yeah. one's sadder. Now, really, now. it all goes great together. It's, 
It does. It yeah. really is. I love it. And uh, whenever I first heard it, like the first four songs or something like that, I was like, this is really good. But if they decided to go for a slower approach, like like sadder songs, they would probably need to get a different singer. Yeah. And then the rest of the album happened, and I was like, fuck, this dude does it. Like, he, he I does, know. Yeah, he really pulls off, like, the sad, slow shit. Like, great lyrics. Great fucking really lyrics. Really great lyrics. Super impressed by all You're that shit. You're a fucking shit. lyric person, man. Yeah. This yeah. guy's got it, man. And, like... Uh, yeah, just like I was saying, it. That's what I like about it. It's really. Good I kept there. thinking like if it if it gets real soft, he's he's got too aggressive of a voice, yeah. and then it went through, and I'm like, this guy yeah. went through the whole fucking range. He's just totally an all around good songwriter. Yeah, he's an excellent good. songwriter. Uh, yeah. It's the only fault I think of the album is that it's uh, it's almost too emotional. Yeah. Uh, there's. Some weird, like unexplainable lyrics and stuff like that, and you're just not sure of the context. Like, you don't really know what he means. Like, there's a song that I hear, and I'm like, this song is about a dude killing himself. Yeah. And other people I talk to, it's like, no, it's not about that. I'm like, no, that's that's what it's talking about. Like, every, every time I hear it, like the last time I heard it, I thought like, this is almost like a fucking overshadowed classic. Oh yeah, this album. I, I think I've heard a few of their other albums, and I, I do like most of them. Yeah. But this one, like, yeah. it's a five for five for this me. This is like, something like people should know about, man. Yeah, this if is, you like this kind, of, you should know about this, man. It's a little piece of indie rock yeah. art. Totally, know? yeah. I, I think so too. Jimmy World. Yeah. You like these guys? Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. That's probably a really good connection. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna play. I can feel a hot one. Yeah. Already. Uh, well, you know, I hope you don't kill uh, yeah. yourself and come back. I hope you make it to the rest of the episode. I don't. Oh. Well, please. I could feel a hot one taking me down For a moment I could feel the force Veiny to the point of tears And you were holding on to make a point What's the point? I'm but a clean man, stable and alone man Make us all, I won't have to try the faces always stay the same So I face the fact that I'm just fine I said that I'm just fine well, I remember head down after you'd found out Man, it is a hell of a drug I need a little more, I think Because enough is never quite enough What's enough? I took it like a grown man crying on the pavement, hoping you would show your face. Well, I haven't heard a thing you said in at least a couple hundred days. Would you say? Perfect, with my teeth ripping out of my head. 
And it looked like a painting I once knew Back when my thoughts were not entirely intact So I prayed for what I thought were angels Ended up being ambulances And the Lord showed me dreams of my daughter She was crying inside your stomach And I felt love again Now, Derek Lee, call it, with sore, aggravated, afflicted, relentless nukes. An audience to the skies that call, ineffable and rest and all. The time has come, succumb control. I came to tear your flesh, I came to give you death, I came to sodomize. To mock the endless mind rape, telling us all God is great. Look out, cause there is something in the dark, coming for you, beware if you wear the mark. Your eardrums are fucking pounding. The ringing is fucking alarming. Inside your head there's a chainsaw. You can't stop fucking banging. Hit and run, baby. I'm a son of a gun. Boom. Yeah! That is a poem comprised of the lyrics from my last playlist. Just a fuck your art show, Farmington. Yeah, buddy, that's real art. Taking somebody else's shit and putting it together. Yeah. <laughs> it's like cover song poetry. Oh, here's something, man. Uh, start your uh, playlist up, man. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> we should have did this already. Probably, but whatever. Hey! Alright, we're back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there was a, uh, some kind of art show at that Sweet Leaf Emporium. Right. That's all I gotta say about that. Oh, uh, yeah, it's there. A bunch of artists, because everybody's a fucking artist now. Oh, well, you know. Art's a bunch of different things anymore. Yeah. You can do watercolors, you can trace, you can. You can just draw Pokemon. Yeah. That's what most people do. But you can't fucking draw your own portrait and shit. <laughs> which is what you guys need to do. Yeah. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a free show in Farmington, I think. Oh, it's free? Yeah. With poetry. Oh, yeah. There's two dudes doing poetry. That's so, real art. Yeah. That's what drew me back from going to that. <laughs> I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah. So, oh, there's an intermission of gayness? <laughs> <laughs> so Denver, speaking of gayness, Denver went to a fucking Jimmy Eat World gay gym. bar. Gay bar. Was it at a gay bar? Okay. Uh, we were supposed to go to a Jimmy Eat World show. Up at, uh, I don't know, what the, what the fuck's it called now? Riverport. Oh, I Hollywood know. Casino Amphitheater, yeah. whatever it is now. And but Megan had car troubles, and we we, uh, we ended up going and picking up Chad and her gay cousin in Florissant. And we was like, "Well, Jimmy World already played. Let's go to a bar." Oh God! And, <laughs> I didn't expect any of this. Her gay cousin was like, "Let's go to JJ's." I was like, fuck yeah. 
And I didn't even know about it till the next day because I blacked out. But, uh, Megan told me, uh, yeah, that was a gay bar. And I was like, no. I was like, now it's all come to me. There was like four old dudes in there. That's it. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah. I went to my first gay bar and didn't even know it. Right. I thought it was going to be more spectacular than that. More fancy. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a regular bar. Just Everybody there no was gay. Chicks. <laughs> yeah, no chicks. Well, even chicks are allowed in a gay bar as long yeah, as they're gay. Yeah, but they were not there. But they were there. They were not there. There's, they were probably at Jimmy World. Probably. There's four gays in this neighborhood, and they're all old dudes. Yeah. I think we went, like, we played some pool. I put up. Uh, Pantera on the jukebox <laughs> and Sayonara Sucker, I was gone. Yeah. I used to go to the VFW in Deloge and uh, there was one guy that always tried to talk to me and every time I'd, I'd go up and I'd buy drinks he, 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 anybody that ever sits next to the, the spot where you buy drinks, stay away from that motherfucker. Yeah. You know, because they're there for a reason. That's a predator. Yeah, that's a predator. Yeah. So I, every time I went up and I would uh, buy a drink, this guy would talk to me. He was an older guy. I forget his name. But if I knew it, I'd fucking say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not really. But, like, he would talk You're going to me. down, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> so he would, like, just talk to me and shit, and he would, he would sway the conversation and the shit that I was into, which is also a date rape tactic. <laughs> and... Uh, Oh, it is. Yeah, and like I, I was just getting crashed all night, and he gave me his number at some point. I put these off there. Oh. He gave me, like, his fucking number and all this shit. And then the next day, somebody was like... I got it. Somebody was like, oh, yeah, that old dude, he's real, he's gay, and he, he's always trying to pick up younger guys and stuff. And I was like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> I thought I made a friend. He gets yeah. looking for my... my Sulky, soft yeah. body. I'm hanging out with the town drunk. Yeah. But it ends up you're hanging out with the town fucking weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he liked me for me, not my saggy body. Yeah, it's like, I'm the town drunk. He's the weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Could now be. we both look weird. Could be. Oh, man. Uh, I guess with that, we'll go into the next album. Uh, yeah, that's your call. Okay. So... You told me how to say this the last time we talked about these albums. Yeah. Is it Diocletian, I believe? Is it? Diocletian. Diocletian. Okay. Diocletian with Gesundrian. <laughs> Gesundrian. Yeah. Something. Gesundrian. Gesundrian. Yeah. Okay. I always put extra vowels and shit to yeah. make sure I'm, you know, make sure yeah. I'm making Gesundrian. it. Gesundrian. Gesundrian. Okay. Now, I love doing this podcast. Because we give each other albums that we okay that we have to listen to multiple times. Yeah. If I listened to this album just one time, I probably would have just been like, "And hey, Derek's such a sweetheart, by the way. He uh, fulfilled my request by uh, at least uh, fucking rinsing out the milk jugs." For him to piss in. Yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't. They yeah, still yeah. fucking smell like milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if I would have heard this album just like one time, I probably would have wrote it off as boring and nothing special. Yeah. But uh, the cover makes you think you're about to get into this pagan metal band. Yeah. And uh, maybe this is some kind of pagan black metal that will make me want to like swig mead and sing some clean vocals about victories and battle but no there's none of that catchy power metal shit here this is muddy dirty nasty like just ugly noise but war metal. yeah it's almost it's very close to war metal yeah. the first song just kind of whizzed right past me because i was like what just happened yeah that first that first like song there's a kind of like intro yeah it's like you kind of you gotta wait a while but it's part of the story right and then once it gets into it it's like boom it's it's a war like, holy shit, this is a soundtrack to a war. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to describe it, too. Yeah. Because it's, uh, 
I mean, it's a dude on a horse. He's out. He's getting ready to go out to battle and shit. And you're like, oh, this is going to be some, basically like some power metal kind of stuff. But it's not. Yeah. It's super fuzzy, sludgy, distorted. You realize these riffs, they're fucking mad. These are angry fucking breakneck riffs. They make you just want to fucking trash your room. Yeah. But this is an album that you really have to like sit and listen to in your headphones on. You don't you don't get up and do nothing. Mm-hmm. You just listen to it. Yeah. It's probably a perfect album to listen to and read the lyrics to while you're doing it. Oh yeah. Because the fuzziness and distortion it keeps it kind of muffled. You got to turn it really loud. Like you got to turn it up pretty loud. And I appreciate an album that you got to turn up loud because I like my music fucking loud. So. This is the definite for fans of, like, Hate Eternal. And that's really the only band that I can name drop. Like, it's just chaotic fucking, like, on the verge of death metal and definitely war metal. Yeah. Uh, I bet this band is, like, fucking amazing, soul-shatteringly good live, too. Because it's always these fuzzy, fucking super distorted bands that whenever you see them live, there's a, that like, just a tone of clarity to it, and it makes it like, holy shit, I didn't even know yeah, that part was in there, you they know? start fucking around with the distortions and, like, the tones and shit, yeah. that means they're usually a good live band. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I listen to this on YouTube, and you probably listen to it on Spotify, this album? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, on Spotify, it does a lot of the songs have, like, fade in and outs and stuff like that. Like, they fade out at the end almost every yeah. time. Okay, so that's normal. I, I thought that that was just something, like, they did on YouTube. Uh, no. So no, 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 that's how, it, that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, Denver's... I thought that was so weird. Denver's always giving me these fucking thinkers. Thinker metal albums. You said that last time. Well, yeah, because we tried to do this episode before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You said that on the last episode we're doing now. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Uh, Denver's always giving me thinkers, and I'm always giving them bangers. But this is a little bit of both. It's definitely a thinker and a banger. Like, there's times you have to totally concentrate on it to understand what's going on. And then there's times that it's just a fucking riff madness of, like, heavy good shit. Uh... This is pretty much a must-have album for extreme metal fans and a must-hear band. They just put out a new album, and I haven't got to hear it yet. But I haven't either. But I really want to, especially after hearing yeah. how good this fucking album was. It was awesome, man. Uh, I know. I've seen that, that new album today, but I know that uh, whenever I listen to it, I'm going to have to sit down and listen to it. Yeah, exactly. It's something you got to make time for. It's not actually... And this is even like a pretty short album. It's just like right above 30 minutes, I think. Yeah. Like, it's not something like a Agaloc album or something like that where you got to like schedule time to listen to it. You just have to schedule yeah. time to not do anything but yeah. listen to it. It's like starting a book, man. Starting yeah. a story. Yeah, if you ever... Oh, fuck yeah. Uh, yeah. If you ever, like, yeah. start reading a book, you can't, like, oh, I got 15 minutes, I'm going to start a book. You got to go, I got an hour, I need to get into it, you know. Yeah. You don't start reading a book whenever Pretty you got much. a half hour free time or some shit. Yeah. So, I really, really fucking dug it, though. It was a really good album. I really want to pick it up. Uh... One day, <laughs> you know, like, I'm just constantly buried in shit that I'm buying. Put it on your list. It's on my fucking list. Your, uh, yeah, your endless notebook of shit. Yeah, I got a whole notebook just that I filled out a couple nights of albums I want and different pricing from different websites and shit. It's, it's a chore. It's a chore. So, yeah. And you wanted to play Wolf Against Serpent. Yeah, I love that one. Oh, yeah, this one, and there was another one, but I've already forgotten the name of it. I should have wrote it down, but it was either between this one and I think the one before it. Yeah, it was the one before it. Yeah, I don't remember the name. I can't remember the fucking name. Uh, Man, it's like the middle of the album, and it's it's definitely like the climax of the album. Yes. But you like how this album goes. Yeah, it it builds, it's a war. It builds up. There's a fucking Max. Like there's the battle, and then, yeah. And then there's the leftovers. Yeah. <laughs> so, enjoy. Yeah.
Oh, fuck. Ha! So, what else you got to talk about? Uh, you said you got a couple things. Oh, I realized uh, today uh, I'm going to donate my body to science. This is always a good start. Yeah. What are we going to do with it? I don't know. Whatever science what, Whatever wants science to. wants to do with me, baby. Check it out, man. It's free. <laughs> All this. Dude, yeah. I agree with you. I, I'm kind of okay with that. Because kind of gonna helping people out. And plus, well, whenever I die, I don't got to fucking stick people with bills and shit. Yeah. Oh, we got to pay for his funeral. It's like, no. Yeah, that's I'm good. I'm gone, dude. Yeah, I'm out. Put me in a fucking yeah. dumpster. That's you know? what I'm going to do. Yeah. That's good. Hey, man, like, if you're in the morning, whenever I die, you don't got to fucking go someplace with a bunch of weirdos. Do it in your own home. Do it. Just do it. Just cry yeah. wherever. Yeah. <laughs> Like, wherever you are, just yeah, cry. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's some weirdos at Harvard right now looking at his liver. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the first thing I kind of thought of is like, well, you donate your body to science, then they open you up and they see all your organs and go, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't want any of this. Yeah. This has been through a fucking wreck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. next one. Yeah. Oh. Either way, like, because I thought about that, like, you know, if you die, like, somebody's going to have to pay some cost. Or yeah. Something. No. <laughs> it hasn't even started decaying yet. And it fucking stinks. <laughs> yeah. And if I know I'm dying, like, maybe I'll swallow a bee. Oh, yeah. And then they'll cut me off and be like, what's this for? <laughs> It's <laughs> your fucking bedroom door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's nothing in there. <laughs> yeah, nothing, man. Yeah. I don't know, but that's what I'm doing. Donate my body to science. Yeah. He's got some tomb mold stickers. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And, uh, oh, how I met your mother. I fucking hate that show. Yeah, it sucks. It's not great. You don't like it? I don't like it. No. I fucking it's, hate it. It's a waste of time. I don't know how it got so big. It's got, like, funny it's got funny moments like every show does though very very few yeah you you like a character they say something funny what's well, the Neil Patrick Harris he's not funny in that what but he's is that, tolerable uh, he's tolerable that's it most of the characters are, Ted sucks I can't believe it lasted that many seasons yeah Ted sucks I fucking hate that show it sucks worst fucking sitcom I set through for like four seasons. Yeah. You know the only I borrowed, joke. I borrowed like one season from Heather because I was like, what's this all about? Right. And uh No, I don't know. The only I, joke I, I really it. liked was the intervention joke. Yeah. Where like every time somebody did something too much they had an intervention for him. Yeah. I thought that was funny, but really I did I watched I watched the entire fucking thing. And I didn't care who the fucking mom was because I knew she was dead. I knew she was dead from, like, the third episode. The whole concept, the whole story of it is okay. Oh, yeah, I love the the idea uh, of it. But, uh, no. Get some fucking new people. Get a fucking sense of humor. (laughs) Get, uh... No, you know what it is? By the wall. I fucking hate it. Yeah, you know what it is? It's just Friends. It's the exact same show as Friends. I like Friends more than that. Well, yeah, Friends is better than that. (laughs) But from the few episodes I've seen, I hate Friends. But I love Friends compared to that. Right. Yeah, I'm not a big Friends fan, but, like, I did sit through the whole season because yeah. Mary wanted to. Yeah. Or the whole uh, series, basically. Yeah. So if you see me, don't start quoting fucking telling at your mother's shit because or I wouldn't get shit. it. Yeah. And even if I did get it, it wouldn't be funny. Yeah. So shut the fuck up. And I love a lot. I almost like probably most of the people in the show. I actually really enjoy most They're good at other shit. Yeah, but that show, they're they're just... Jason uh, Siegel? Siegel. Ah, oh, man. He's he fucking rules. great. He's so funny. He's great in fucking... Uh, what's that? Where they're friends? I uh, love you, man. He was fucking great in that. Amazing. Uh, he was great as uh, Sarah Marshall. Great. Sarah Marshall, yeah. Hey, oh, man. So funny. SLC Funk. Yeah. He yeah, he was in that. Yeah, he was great in that. Uh, yeah. But yeah, dude. He's, yeah, stay away from your sitcoms, dude. Yeah. That's what's up. Uh, but, that was cool. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, here's something that I had happen to me 
the other day. I had to ship some stuff off. Like, this is the first time I've ever had to, like, send something, you know? Like, I sent some... A little work? Well, no, uh, like, I sent a t-shirt to somebody. You know, whenever, like, you buy CDs and stuff, you're usually dealing with a company or something, and they gotta send it to you. Oh, what'd you send? Well, I sent a... I had an old t-shirt that somebody wanted to buy off me, and I sent them, like, some patches and podcast stickers and stuff like that. And, uh... That whole fucking thing you have to do to send shit, it makes me feel really, really bad for every time that, like, I bought something off of Hell's Headbangers, mostly, and then, like, two days later, bought something off Hell's Headbangers, two days later, bought something off Hell's Headbangers, because that's a trip to the fucking post office where you got to, like, 50 questions with the dude at the post office. It took dude, me, that's it, why I've never done shit like that. It I, took me, like, I'm 45 not, minutes. I'm not going to send nobody nothing. Yeah, dude, it sucked. I felt really bad for all these record companies. I can only imagine. <laughs> but, and people that I buy shit off of, because, like, that was a nightmare. I'm sorry that I do this to you people on a weekly basis. Yeah. I still get, didn't get my death call CD. Uh, you got mine. Yeah. <laughs> I got a few things out there that I still never got. But yeah, I would never fucking send anything. Yeah, it sucks. I understand why people are late sending stuff, why people don't send stuff. Like, it's it's a fucking nightmare. I would yeah. never want to do it again. Yeah. I'll do it for my buds and stuff. I sent uh, some stickers to a guy in Canada not too long ago, too. And, like... You know, it's not bad if it's one person. Yeah. That's what it was, too, though. It was just one person. I was like, I gotta answer all this yeah. shit. But it was because it was in a box. Like, the stickers thing didn't go so bad. Like, I brought it in. It was an envelope. It had, like, a, a dark funeral pack, a couple stickers, and a couple buttons and stuff. That's a job. It is. Uh, you gotta pay somebody yeah. for that shit. Yeah. You know, like... You like, gotta sit down look through shit ship shit off. Yeah. You can't do that yourself. Yeah. That's not a one that's not a one man job. Yeah. And if you do do that That's uh, why you didn't get your Death Cult CD is because probably. that's because do or die was one guy. Yeah. So Death Cult, like he he did it all himself and yeah. he would have had to do all that shit himself yeah. and that's why you didn't get it. Man. That's why I never got my holy mess shirt. Yeah. Was, Even after I emailed the guy. Yeah. It's and just, I ordered from there once before. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you got that sticker. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, I don't understand it. It's rough, man. Yeah. I didn't care for it at all. I got a question for you. What is your go-to drunk food right now? Drunk food right now? Yep. What's it been? Oh, uh, no rice and tuna. Oh, still? <laughs> <laughs> you told me that before. No. I don't ever. I've never asked this question before. Well, this week it's been no rice, the chicken fried rice. Yeah. And I've had uh, that barbecue pulled chicken. Oh yeah. And I've been putting that in there. You know that sounds somewhat healthy. Not bad. I mean, it sounds like it's actually pretty good for you. Yeah. I know I make pulled chicken all the time, and it's it's one of my diet foods. So yeah. adding that to nor rice, which nor rice is already really low fat shit. So yeah. it's just the much, sodium. Yeah, it's pretty low fat shit, man. You're living good. Yep. You're on the high horse. You're on the dollar twenty five high horse. Yep. Fuck yeah. Uh, I went to but a. But tonight I have. Uh, Honey chicken and rice. Oh from, yeah, yes. From some. first walk. There you go, buddy. Well, that's all bad. Yeah, that's all. None, none of that's good. Breaded, fried, covered in yeah. sugar. My day off. Yeah, it's my day off. My <laughs> heat day. Woo. Yeah. Uh, I went what about to, you? I went to a Chasm concert uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month. <laughs> now I went to the show mostly. I liked all the bands that were on the bill. It was the Chasm, Headliner. Uh, Crucimentium, which is a band that Denver showed me and I really, really liked. Like, straight from the get-go. 
uh, Infernal Conjugation, which I didn't know anything about, and then Mulder. Mulder tagged themselves to the bill, and I said, well, I'm going to that fucking show. Oh, I enjoy the fuck out of some Mulder. Mean motherfucker. Yeah, mean fucking ostrich. Which is the man that Derek showed me. Yeah. Mean motherfucker. Yeah, so they worked out. Uh, later on in the time up into the concert, I checked out Infernal Conjuration, and I'd be goddamn they were... So fucking good as well. Who? Infernal Country. The man oh, yeah. I showed you before yeah. the podcast. Man. Dude, they sound fucking rad as shit. Yeah, this was. I probably, wrote them down. This was probably the fucking concert to go to that wasn't a festival. You know, like festivals, they're always great and shit. But this was probably the fucking tour of the year. The Not death that, metal tour. Yeah, big ass fucking death In metal St. tour. In St. Louis. And it hit the crummiest, shittiest bar you could find. Yep. And it it was so fun though. It was perfect that it hit that small bar because like that kind of shit used to happen all the time. Oh yeah, this was no bigger than the inside of like okay, two of this garage. Yeah. That was the show. Like that was it. That's the entire yeah. fucking room. And, and they're playing over there. Yeah, well, yeah, they're, they're, there's no stage. They were just playing on the ground. Yeah. And, like, Mulder plays. The only barrier are the fucking... The amps that the they put there, they stand there, behind, yeah. you know, because yeah. they're like, don't get too close to me, fucker. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, they Mulder played, man, and I just I that nobody was getting into it. But nobody knew Mulder really. So like I was like wanting to get really fucking into it, but I was like, it's just me and this fucking chick with a short haircut over here. So oh, dyke. So I was like, I just wanna rock out and fucking scream the lyrics and shit, but I'm I'm like two feet from the singer's face and like I just I couldn't fucking do it. I couldn't enjoy myself as much as I wanted to. Yeah. But Right before the show, I gave the drummer a sticker of ours. For oh, you met him before. Yeah, I met him right before that. And uh, was he cool with it. Oh yeah, he was awesome. He, they all said like you know they do the interviews and shit like that if we wanted to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, well, fuck yeah. Well, fuck yeah. Exactly. So uh, the last song there, like this song goes out to Derek, and I was like, ah, like. <laughs> Being a huge fucking Mulder fan, I totally like it. But I guess the caption of the noise I made was squelching. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's like being 19 of Pops again. Yeah, yeah exactly. And like, yeah. you know, the guitar player's playing a solo and then he points at you and you're like... Hey, we're yeah. still the same nerds. Yeah, we're still the same fucking nerds as those nerds. Uh, next band comes on, Infernal Conjugation. Except now we can drink with them. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. They, uh... They kick fucking ass all the way through. Yeah. I knew they did. I heard the album beforehand, and I will go ahead and say... No, on, Chasm? No, uh, Infernal Conjugation. Okay. I will go ahead and drop that I'm pretty sure that their album is going to be on my top ten of the year. Like, ever since I first heard it, it's been top-notch. Uh, Crucimentium comes on. They fucking kill it. They're, I'm like just inches away from those guys because the crowd's getting stuffier, you know. Everybody's packing up behind you and stuff. And so, like, I'm even closer. I'm taking videos and pictures with my phone and stuff. And I'm like, man, I could totally fucking kiss this bass player if he wanted me to. Dude, afterwards, you need to show me some pictures and shit. Oh, yeah, I got a bunch. Uh, <laughs> and, uh... I've been pretty familiar with... What is, was that, a cancer call? Uh, it's <laughs> something rough. <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, I think I'm going to live. You've never smoked a cigarette a day in your life. <laughs> I, smoked, <laughs> I smoked a partial cigarette yeah. with a five-year-old next door one yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He called me a pussy. Yeah. He got a bad fucking gnat thing in the air. Yeah. Uh, Chasm came on, and I mean, I've been I've been familiar with the Chasm before, but they yeah. fucking destroyed. They like I even had, I had to leave. That's one of you like you know them for a while. Yeah, but I remember reading about them in Metal Maniacs whenever I was fucking yeah. 15, 16 years old. 
cold and checking them out. But uh, I had to leave during the chasm a few times because I was like, I had, I was drunk and I was just getting too fucking excited. Uh, <laughs> like, I really oh, was. Did you make yourself leave? Yeah, I, I walked out a couple you times. Kinda, you cut yourself off from being a fan. Yeah, because I was right there in front of the. That's like, crazy. Yeah, in front of like all of them and like. I, I probably should have done that a few times. Yeah. Uh, and every time I left, though, like I left, I'd get another beer. And I'm like, I'm gonna chill out. I'm gonna drink a beer. And then I turn around, and the singer of Infernal Congregation was like two or three feet away from me. I'm like, I'm gonna go bother that motherfucker. Uh, and I met that dude, and I have to say, like, I praised him. I told him all the shit that I thought about his band, how great I thought they were. And I don't take, I don't say this lightly about people, but that motherfucker is a sweetheart. Like he was the nicest fucking. Guy, I was telling him like, man, I think your album is really in the running for the album of the year for me. And he was like, he was like, oh, thanks so much. Like he was so into it. And I mean, who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be like a fucking totally a band that nobody knows from Mexico to have some dude hey, go to another country to go That's my favorite album. Yeah, to go to some another shithole country in a shithole city. Uh, fucking bar in the middle of nowhere. I'd be fucking lifted, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope I fucking made him happy about that shit, cause I and I could tell like he was pretty happy with me saying it, you know. But, but uh, I uh, did they speak fluid English? Oh yeah, they were great at it. They they were perfectly fine. Right. Uh, dude, it was amazing. It was a really great fucking concert to go to. And uh. It's a great fucking yeah, I mean, round up of music, man. It was awesome. It was the best fucking death metal show I've ever been to. I can say that. And the Chasm, man, they played something from fucking everything. They got a long line of fucking discography. Yeah. And like, yeah, they're an old band, aren't they? Yeah, they they came out in I think '93 or something like that. Yeah. They played something from everything. They went, which is weird. Like when you first think '90 something, yeah. When you first think it's like, okay, they've been, they're not that old, but then you think, oh shit, we're in 2019. Both think 2003, 2013. Yeah. And 2019, they're fucking, they're, oh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> they're like 16, 17 years old or some yeah. shit. But, but you know, you're still, thin, you know, you're still. I don't know, if and like, then if you're like, like me, you're still thinking like it's 2000. Yeah, so I mean, it's like 80, 90, 2000. Yeah, so it's that's kind of like whenever I, I see Slayer, I'm like they're 30 years old, yeah. and it's like oh fuck, they're like 60. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And it's crazy to see this band. Uh, this was the Chasm's last American tour. All of their last. Uh, I think the singer is moving back to Mexico. And New family shit. Maybe. I'm not sure. They just said that it was their last American tour. I also heard that this uh, was the last St. Louis show. Here's something that I, that I fucking heard from multiple people and multiple bands. St. Louis is one of the shittiest places to go to because nobody buys merch. And I can... I can pretty much verify that. I bought a hundred and something bucks worth of merch, and I don't think I've seen two other people buy something. And that was oh, it. Oh, shit. Yeah. Nobody else I came with bought well, anything. Well, probably because people moved from here to there. Yeah. And they got money to go to the show. Yeah. But they don't got money to spend it. But right. they, they want to say, hey, I live in St. Louis. Right. Yeah. Uh, they got to save every penny. Hey, dude. Who gives a fuck if you live in St. Louis? Denver yeah. wasn't even at the show and he bought a fucking t-shirt. Yeah. So, fuck you guys, man. Like, yeah. the, I, I, I gave him money to buy me a Christian Minton shirt. Yeah. Like, the fact that I, I was texting another guy from Chicago. And, I and, think uh, if you live in St. Louis, you're fucking gay. <laughs> I do. I was texting another guy from Chicago and I was like, man, nobody's buying merch here at this show. And he's like, dude, that's all I hear about St. Louis is nobody buys anything. And that's why bands don't want to fuck can go. So that's a fucking problem that we need to fix. Come on, St. Louis. 
I showed up. I showed up from Dirt Town below, yeah. you know, and I came up there and I spent 120 That's bucks. That's why maybe. a lot of good bands don't fucking come yeah. around. You want to bitch about the how we don't? they come is Kansas City. Illinois or yeah, yeah, Kansas City, all then, uh, all around St. Louis. I actually even heard a, a guy from Kansas City that went to the same show. He said that. There wasn't a whole lot of people buying merch there neither, so buckle the fuck up, Missouri. Well, you need to get your shit in gear. Well, St. Louis is a different music scene now. It's called Gay. I don't it's know called, what it is, uh, What is that band asking Alexandria? Are they from St. Louis? No, I don't know, but I see a lot of shit. Like, everybody goes to that kind of shit. Like, huh. uh, everybody likes fucking gay music. Probably. Yeah. I can... You like gay music, guys. And uh, you live up there. I don't know. It's, you're a certain kind of people. People in St. Louis are a certain kind of people. Yeah, and it's not necessarily great. I don't, like, I did St. Louis, but it's an hour away. Yeah. You're not anybody. Yeah, Shut you're up. not, like, I can go up there any fucking time I want and fuck with your yeah. ecosystem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. It's uh, not cool anymore. Nobody goes to the fucking mall. Yeah, nobody goes to the nobody fucking mall. Nobody goes to the mall, Why would you man? go to the fucking mall whenever the shit that you really yeah. want is at your fingertips yeah. in your living room? Yeah. Fuck them all. Yeah. The arse is rusted. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well... But there's so many restaurants. There's so many other places to go. There are some pretty there's fucking... There's so many friends. Man, we can do everything. You know, it's better, though. Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. hundred times uh, better. You know what's better? What? Everything but St. Louis. You know what's better? A fucking dirt road with a fucking dead hooker yeah. on it. <laughs> hey, Science Center, Magic House, other than that... Fuck you, St. Louis. You know, like, St. Louis, though, they do have... I don't know, you were saying bar is pretty cool. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. They, they do have some really fucking nice restaurants. The Loop is pretty cool. You can go to some... Pretty, but it's not worth it. But it's really, Living like, there? it's not worth praising. Living there? It's not worth praising. It should be the exact same as fucking Farmington is right now. We should have just yeah. those same restaurants. Yeah. And this is just a fucking rant. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Farmington sucks. Farmington sucks, too, though. Uh, yeah. It's oh. a bunch of cul-de-sacs and like a gigantic, uh, we got J.C. Penney's and then what 2,000 fucking restaurants are we going to go to? Yeah. <laughs> well, we used to have, well, here's I'm the thing, though. I'm pairs of Levi's. I'm hungry. Where am I going? <laughs> I need to not fit in them. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing about fucking Farmington is we used to have 12 West and it was an amazing, like, yeah. restaurant that you could go to for high-class fucking Where? food. 12 West. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it used to be a Bar and Grill. Yeah, Bar and Grill. Great fucking place. You can go there and order shit that you've seen on Food Network. Fucking nice. But now, it's just another fucking Applebee's. Yeah. All they have is the exact, hey, yeah. there's this uh, chicken with bacon and cheese and mushrooms on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, they got that shit at Applebee's. I think we should <laughs> fucking bomb the place and just have... Once the smoke clears, have a value city and a riot. <laughs> anywhere or anywhere <laughs> that Ryan's. building, that building with a buffet, whatever that is. Ponderosa. Yeah, dude, I, I'd Ponderosa be down with some fucking Ponderosa, city, dude. man. <laughs> That's it. Bomb it, bomb it, and build a Ponderosa. <laughs> yeah, and a value city, dude. They have a good book. I don't give a fuck about that. I know you don't, but dude, they do have some good like shorts and jeans. Shorts and jeans. Whoopee. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to do, bro. We need a fucking record store. So. Okay. So, there's Value City, there's Ponderosa. Well, I mean, there's plenty of room yeah. after we bomb it. <laughs> yeah, after we nuke it. A giant record store. Yeah, and Amiibo. Oh, the size of uh, Jason Penny. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, just put it in the Jason Penny. record store. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. We got to figure it out, motherfucker. Yep. Start building, Farmington. Yep. Start moving, motherfucker. Yeah. Get all them kinds out, them oh, Jason yeah. Penny kinds. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, fuck you, Farmington. Yep. Fuck you, uh, St. Louis. Yeah. All right, I think 
we gotta wrap this one up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for listening to Black and Out with Denver and Derek. Uh, the only podcast you're gonna hear some shit like this on. Yeah. The work. Damn, they're blacking out. Yeah. And uh, thank you. No, don't thank you. Okay. Smoke weed. Fuck you. Smoke uh, hash. Smoke. Roll that shit. Smoke that shit. Motherfucker, like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Bang that shit in your veins. Yeah. Bang, uh, dude, bang shit in your veins. <laughs> <laughs> fucking party, All right, bitch. we're on fucking Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Blacking out WDND. Marry your mother. All right. I gotta go. Thank you. Penis out. Smoke weed.